Today, inshallah, I want to talk about something that we often deal with. And this is based on many people have been coming to me for counseling purposes and so forth. And subhanAllah, all the problems I hear in the community, there of course there are many issues in the community and many of them have different foundational problems. But one thing that I've noticed is that over and over again, there's one common problem with majority of their problems. See, there's always a foundational problem and then you have symptoms, right? A person has a flu. That's the, that's the foundational problem. Then after that, you're going to have coughing, sneezing, um, and other, other issues after that. So you have a foundational problem, and then you have roots of that or symptoms of that. So today, inshallah, I want to talk about a core problem that many of us, we deal with. And what do we learn from the seerah of the Prophet and what do we learn from the Quran about it? First of all is, the hadith, there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein he says that anyone who does something to please people while they know deep down inside they are displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with this person and not only that but the people that he tried to please Allah will make them displeased with him too on the other hand if a person does something to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing that and in doing that he begins to displease other people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with him and the people who perhaps were displeased with him initially, they'll be pleased with him. And then not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his actions and his speech beautiful to the people. Now the reason why I talk about this is today, that as I said earlier, that there's a common problem that we have and that is that you have people who are considered as people pleasers. Basically, you cannot say no to other people. Do you have no foundation? You have no boundaries in life. So today, inshallah, quickly, I want to take a few minutes of your time to talk about what are the consequences of this and how do we overcome this. First of all is that when I've seen often in our community that when people try to say yes to every single opportunity, and by the way, there are so many opportunities in our community. There's so many opportunities of activism in our community, so many opportunities of charity in our community, and there's always volunteers needed at every single organization and there are some people who feel that I need to say yes to every single opportunity I need to be every single where every single place to help people out but you know what happens in doing that when you keep on saying yes and yes and yes that then the family people the family rights are, ne are then ne neglected how many times I've had husbands come to my office that my wife is not there for me my wife has no time for me why because she's always saying yes, la bake, la bake, la bake. On the other hand, I have wives and women who have come to my office, mothers who have come to my office, that our husbands have absolutely no time for their kids and they have no time for their family. Why? Because they're always trying to go everywhere and try to respond to every single call. Remember, brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us a very beautiful example. He was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He responded to the call, but never at the expense of his family. Never at the expense of his children. There was a time of day that he would give time to his children. There was a time of day that he gave time to the emissaries. There was a time of day that he gave to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. There was a time of day that he gave to his own spirituality, which often takes a hit in doing all this. Our religious spirituality also takes a hit in all this. And then not only that, but there was a time that he would go and visit all his wives one by one and take time and talk to them not just go into their house assalamu alaikum and out no sit down with them talk to them give them their due time and there was always one house where he would spend the night at this was this is what you call a balance in the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam today unfortunately we don't have that balance and the very first group of people that suffer because of this is our families so this is number one what happens number two the fear of being left out what does that mean you feel that if I say no one time, then that group will leave me out. They won't call me for any other purpose. I have to be there for my friends every single time. My friends call me, I will have to be there no matter what. And if you feel that you're going to be left out, perhaps, perhaps you're hanging out with the wrong group of people. 
Perhaps you are, you are surrounding yourself with the wrong company because someone who is understanding, someone who, when you're in a positive company, they understand your dilemma. They understand your challenges. Just because one time you say no to that group and to your social group, they will understand that he or she cannot come for a certain reason and they will respect you for that. But if you keep on saying yes and yes and yes and you neglect your priorities of life, then wallahi, they will not have respect for you anymore. Another thing that happens is that we become enslaved to other people's priorities. Let me give you an example. You know, I've, I've, visit, I've seen families, and I have families who have come to me. They're not happy. Why? They don't get family time. Why do they not get family time? I asked him this question. I asked the, I asked the brother, I said that you have a five-day job. You don't work on the weekends. Why do you not have time for your family? And you know what he said? He said that every single Friday night and every single Saturday night, I get an invitation to some Dawat. And when I have to go, and I asked him, why do you have to go to the Dawat? Why do you have to go uh, to this invitation? And he said, once again, the fear of being left out, and not only that, but I have to stick with the community. Then, he, then he's trying to explain to me that aren't we supposed to stick with our community? Aren't we supposed to build up cohesion? And I told him, yes, but not at the expense of your family. But at the same time, what, he's, what I told him is that when you start saying yes to every single invitation, you won't be happy either. And he was telling me that every single weekend that comes, he has no day to himself and no day to his family. And that is why it is very important that when we start making ourselves slaves to other people's schedule, remember, people's schedules are going to keep on going on, but we cannot enslave ourselves to other people's schedule. We have a schedule, we stick to our schedule, we stick to our priorities. The next one is, which is very important, is that when you become a people player, Caesar, then you cannot stand up for what is right. See, there are going to be times where you can stand up for people and you can stand up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there will be, trust me, there will be times in our life where you have Allah and His Prophet on one side. You have deen, uh, your deen on one side and you have your family on the other side. Or you have some other people in your, on the other side and you're going to have to make a choice. If you are considered as a people pleaser, then you will always go to the other side and you will neglect the side of Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what we learn from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is you always give preference to Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another thing that happens, another consequence of becoming a people pleaser is that you lose respect in the eyes of other people. When you say, I'm available, I'm available, and you have no other, because pe see, everyone has a family, everyone has a job, everyone has priorities of life. But when other people realize that you are not paying attention to those priorities of life, and every single time there's a call and you are there, that means you are neglecting something. And when you are neglecting other priorities of life, you lose respect in the eyes of other people. You don't gain respect out of this. You gain, you lose respect a lot of times. Yes, there are going to be times when people might say something positive. But once again, I truly believe that if you say yes to every single call, there's other things, more important things in your life that are going to take a hit. Now, what are the solution to all this? Solution number one is, we have to set up our priorities. You know, there was a professor one time, he was in his class, he held up a jar. He held up a jar and he had, right next to the jar, he had a huge rock, a big rock, and he had medium-sized rocks, and then he had sand. Okay, he had sand. Or he had pebbles. And so what he did was that he took the pebbles first, and he filled up the jar with all the pebbles. Then after that, he tried to put the, the, the medium-sized rocks. And then he tried to fit the big rock and the big rock would not fit in. Why? Because it was already filled with pebbles and it was already filled with medium-sized rocks. Then he asked the class that how do you fit the rock in? And they all said, well, of course, you have to take out the pebbles. Then you put the big rock first in. Then you put the medium-sized rocks in. And then when you put the pebbles, the pebbles will fill all the, the gaps. So he says, this is exactly what your life is. You have the highest priorities of your life. What is the highest priorities for majority of us? It is our family. It is our deen. It is our, our job. And um, there's a lot of other things that are a priority for us. There might be probably four or five priorities. Those are your bigger rocks. That is what you have to focus on. This is what we all have to focus on when it comes to setting up our schedule. Other things such as, which are considered as the pebbles, which is friends, so, uh, social... Um, um, our social groups and so forth, 
and, you know, and going out with others and so forth, with other families and so forth, those are considered as the pebbles. They are not the priority. You have priorities. If you try to fit the other things which are not priorities into your life, you will not have time for the priorities. So this is something very important. And even myself, what I do is that every single time when I sit down before the week starts, I sit down. You have to sit down and prioritize your life, prioritize your tasks, and this is how you complete things in life. There are people who sit down and they have, they have to-do items on their list for one year, two years, a simple to-do item. Why? Because we don't know how to prioritize, prioritize things in our life. The next one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure is always the priority. Remember, if you try to please people rather than pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as they say in Urdu, na yahan karoge, na wahan karoge. Okay, you're neither here, you're neither there. You will not be liked here, you will not be liked over there. That's why the priority is always uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, what benefits us? Me, myself, and I is the priority. My religiosity is the priority. That is what Allah will ask me about. And then family comes and then other people come. Lastly, lastly, there is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong in saying enough, no. There's nothing wrong in saying no. Let me explain. You know, in Surah Al-Kafirun, this is something that the Quraysh, they came up with a plan. When they saw that Rasulullah was adamant about his da'wah, there's no way he's going to leave giving da'wah about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, you know what, let's come up with a plan. They went to Rasulullah and they said that let's make a deal here. You worship our gods for a certain period of time and we'll worship your God for a certain period of time. Let's try to make a deal. Let's try to strike a deal. You know, this is negotiation. Once again, what they want is that the Prophet ﷺ is okay with their terms and pleases them. Once again, what happened at that time? First of all, Rasulullah said no. Why did he say no? Because at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down a surah. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدُ At the end of the surah, what did Allah say? لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَّدِينَ this is your way, this is my way. We're not going to compromise here. Okay? There came a time that the Prophet had to say no, and he stood his ground by saying no. Often when people try to come to please us, when, when people try to come and you know, they try to compromise our values, they try to talk to us, we often give in. We compromise our own standards at times to please other people. Rasulullah wasallam. in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through Surah Al-Kafirun teaches us a very powerful lesson. That when, it when the time comes that you have to negotiate and compromise with other people, you never ever compromise your standards. The standard is believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't compromise that. Likewise, many ulama say, from a, from a productive point of view in life, you don't ever compromise your own values of life. So we keep these things in mind. Inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us uh, more productive in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our relationships more productive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us more uh, positive personalities. Amin Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Inna alladhina yu'zuna Allah wa rasoolahu la'anahum Allah fi dunya wal akhirati wa a'adda lahum azaban muhina wal ladhina yu'zuna al mu'minina wal mu'minati bi ghayri maktasabu faqad ihtamalu buhtanan wa isman mubina Oh uh -huh.